Good morning dear friends brothers and sisters in the Lord I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Praise God and thank God for his faithfulness in letting us see another beautiful day and as we are preparing for today's activities and jobs and works let us be silent and be quiet in the presence of the Lord just for a few minutes and let us hear the voice of the Lord and today's meditation is is uh, from taken from the gospel according to st luke chapter 7 verses 22 and 23 verses 22 and 23 of chapter 7 of luke says many will say to me on that day lord lord did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and uh, perform many miracles then i will tell them plainly i never knew you away from me you evil doers and what is the message we have from this passage today and i pray that the holy spirit will enlighten us and help us to understand what the lord is really telling us and we will be wise to listen carefully and do accordingly you know Jesus emphatically states that uh, there will be many in the church who will be preaching and teaching and be involved in performing miracles and signs and wonders and they believe they are the true servants of God and yet in reality they never knew uh, 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 Jesus said in reality he never knew them <clears throat> now that is very strange if you do not know the bible properly and what god requires of me as a preacher and as a teacher you will wonder how could this be and yet listen to me what it means according to verse 23 definitely jesus says you know they will proclaim there in front of Jesus ah we have prophesied we have done many miracles and we casting out demons and all these things we did all in your name how could say you never knew you or knew us so let us follow Jesus teaching to escape the deceit of the last days the disciples must be totally committed to the truth and the righteousness revealed in God's word and there is a danger in focusing only on the success of the ministry and uh, neglecting the personal relationship with the lord many make the terrible mistake of uh, making the ministerial success and uh, as the standard by which to judge our personal relationship with Christ that is a great mistake we are living at a time when many mega ministers and ministries are falling into the deceitfulness of riches and pleasures and luxuries that money can buy and among them are false teachers and false prophets and many are there among us today those who fall into the trap of such deceitfulness of riches and face the judgment of the lord the great judge his ex is his sentence over them will be i never knew you now these words of jesus unmistakably make it clear that preachers may proclaim the gospel in the name of christ drive out demons perform miracles while they themselves have no genuine faith to be saved or 
no genuine saving faith in Christ. Scripture teaches us that fervent preaching the gospel is an, an, an apparent zeal for righteousness and the working of miracles can be performed in this age under the power and influence of Satan. And we need to be very, very careful, therefore, making the success of the ministry, like performing miracles and uh, casting out demons and all, it's a great mistake to judge your relationship with the Lord. And uh, miracles and, uh, as the Bible very clearly says in the last days, and as the end of the last days approaches very fast, these kind of miracles and signs and wonders can easily performed by the influence and power of Satan. Paul also make it, makes it clear that an apparent powerful anointing can be the work of Satan. And we see this happening in this world today all around us. Many times you may ask this question, if these preachers are not functioning under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, how come their preaching is drawing many people into the kingdom of God? And how come many miracles are happening? The reason is what I just quoted above. And another important reason is, many times God overrides Satan's activity in false preachers in order to bring salvation and healing to those who sincerely respond to God's word. Because there are people who can preach God's word and nevertheless they may not be righteous, they may not be right with God, but nevertheless they are proclaiming God's word. And God is always ready to honor his word in order to bring salvation and healing to those who respond to the word. And if you read Philippians chapter 1 verses 15 to 18, and I must read that this for you. Philippians chapter 1 verses 15 to 18. Now we read here, um, It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry but others out of goodwill. The latter, the latter do so in love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of a selfish ambition, not sincerity, sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me, while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. You see, Paul is making something positive out of uh, something negative. And something bad, and he is making something good. And it will be good for us to, in anything that we don't approve, look for something positive, something good out of it. And uh, it is always God's desire that those who proclaim the gospel be righteous. You read this in First Timothy chapter. Uh, 3 verses 1 to 7, read that, the qualification are given for the servants of God, the preachers and the leaders. Yet, when an evil or uh, immoral person preaches God's word, God can still work in the hearts 
of those who respond sincerely from their heart to God's word with commitment to Christ. That's what God is looking. And he is not looking at the preacher. He is looking at his word and the listeners. They are innocent. They do not know the private life of the preacher. So God does not want them to be victims of the immorality or uh, uh, corruption of this preacher. In other words, God will not endorse any unrighteous preacher. But he always endorses what? His word and the biblical truth. And those who respond and accept the truth that the preacher is proclaiming in faith and sincerely want to commit to themselves to the Lordship of Jesus, God is not going to abandon them. They won't allow them to be victim of the immorality of the preacher, but he is going to honor his word, which is working in the heart of this man, and he will save him. He will heal him. He will perform a miracle for him. And if that is the reason he came, because God's word will be honored by God. And my friends, we all must understand this, that God can turn around anything that is for the good of his kingdom, while he deserves or he reserves the judgment on the immoral and um, uh, 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 preacher or unrighteous preacher and that judgment will definitely come upon that person. So now you understand why miracles can still happen and the people's souls can still be saved uh, when an unrighteous preacher preaching the gospel. That is still the gospel. That is still God's word and the living word. And um, it, uh, it unfortunately sometimes it comes forth from the mouth of an unrighteous person that God will deal with that person and give him the due punishment. Now that is what happened to this group of people who came to Jesus at the last day of reckoning. This is a parable Jesus told what is going to happen in the last day of judgment. And on the judgment day, it will be meted out to them. And their door will not be opened to them to the kingdom of God. And then they will come frantically. Master, Lord, Lord. They will call out, Lord, Lord. And uh, Jesus' response will be, I don't know you. So the door will not be opened to you. And then they will cry out to the Lord, how can you say that? Uh, we have been in that street and in this street preaching your word and also performing many miracles including casting out demons and healing the blind and healing the sick. And I, we even prophesied to them. Don't you remember all these things, Lord? And God gives only one word, judgment. I know you not and my friends when we stand before the judgment seat of christ as very clearly the bible teaches us there is going to be a judgment for the believers according to second corinthians chapter 5 we all will stand before the judgment seat and when at that time come nobody will stand with us we'll have to face personally what we were and we all have to give an account. Now when we stand there, what do you like to hear from his mouth? Do you want to hear this? I do not know you. I am sorry. Or you want to hear this. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in the little matters of the kingdom of God. Now I will make you in charge of much. Enter into my father's rest. Prepare for you. 
And I pray that you and I, as disciples of Jesus Christ, remember, I address everyone. And we, are, we, we, we separate the disciples into clergy and uh, ordinary members. I am not addressing this. I am not making any distinction. We all are disciples of Christ. And we all are equally accountable to God. And we all will be brought before the judgment seat of Christ. It is not to judge us to, and then cast out into hell. We somehow save ourselves with that by, by our commitment to Jesus to believe. But when that judgment comes, it is not going to be easy. Our whole life is exposed to the view of the angels and others in heaven. So what do you like to hear? Let us live our life and serve the Lord sincerely and not with any selfish motive, not as a gain of a, a wealth. No, let us work for Jesus and serve him faithfully for his glory and his glory alone. And I pray that Today, you will be blessed with God's own anointing. And as you meet with people, God the Holy Spirit is going to whisper to you. He is a person with whom you can share the gospel. Do it and serve the Lord. God bless you, my friends. He loves you. He cares. Let us be careful how we live. Amen.